hope you're safe and well this uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, four more days to go. Um, and what we're looking at doing this morning is carrying on a bit further into our book this morning, um, Mouse, Bird, Snake, Wolf. What you will need for the beginning of the lesson this morning will be to have open the PDF um, mini ebooks that I've, I've saved to the website. Now, I couldn't save it all in one um, all in one file or folder because um, the folder was just too big, the PDF was just too big. I tried compressing it, it didn't work. So I've had to save it into chunks. So you might need to have all three open if you want to follow me um, through the book. Um, or alternatively, you can listen to me reading as well. But it'd be great if you could follow me. What we're going to do this morning is we're going to read from where we left off to the a uh, to the end of page 28. Um, so if you could go and do that now, I'll press and press pause and press play when you're ready to hear the story. OK, so the last time we read um, and worked last week, we were talking about the gods and how they were very um, full of themselves, very arrogant um, about how wonderful a world they've made. But they um, they were being a bit lazy as well, weren't they? OK, so we're going to carry on with the story on the next page. Um, from where we were. Um, so, no, there are no other worlds like this one. There are no other gods like us. We are indeed the best of all gods in the best of all worlds. And that was where we'd got to. The next page then. And so they lay on their clouds and floated through the sky and took tea and slept and snored. And yes, they did tell one another what they would make once they got back to work, if only they had the energy, and if only they had the time. But in truth, their world was still unfinished, still had many gaps and spaces in it, and there was still much making to be done. One day, Harry, Sue and little Ben decided to go wandering, not too far, just through the fields and woods around their homes. They walked on walls, climbed over fences, jumped across streams, swung from trees, and they dared one another to dash and leap through empty spaces, which could be a little scary, but great fun. After a while, they lay down on soft turf beneath a gnarled old tree and beside a sparkling stream, and they rested. All of a sudden, little Ben said in surprise, as if he'd never thought of it before, this is a very peculiar world. Then he looked up at the clouds. Why are there so many gaps and spaces in it? He yelled. The gods took no notice. It needs more things in it, he said. Still, no notice. Little Ben sighed. Have you ever looked into an empty space? He asked his friends. Of course we have, they said. Sometimes, little Ben continued, when you look into an empty space, you can kind of see something in it. Something in an empty space, said Harry. Yes, said Ben. You can sort of see what's missing from it. Like what? asked Harry. Like a mouse. A mouse, said Harry. What on earth is a mouse? I don't quite know, said Ben. He wrinkled his nose and scratched his head. It's a kind of mousy thing, I suppose. Harry shook his head. Sue rolled her eyes. Yes, said Ben, it's a mousy thing. A funny, little, squeaky, scampery thing. Then it's just like you, said the others. Yes, laughed Ben. And he thought of a mouse inside himself. Tell you what, he said. I'll show you what one looks like. Watch. You can see on the pictures there, the idea is growing in his mind. So it starts off as a little blob and gradually becomes more like a mouse. And that tells you, doesn't it, as well, I think, in this story that um, it's not quite our world because the, the children don't quite know what you know a mouse is. And you know most of us will know what a mouse looks like. He glanced up into the sky. The gods weren't looking. He gathered some wool and some petals and some nuts and made the shape of a mouse with them. 
he laid it in the grass. Squeak and scamper, little mouse, he whispered. Come along, don't be shy. Squeak and scamper. The children laughed. They didn't really believe that the mouse would squeak and scamper, but as they watched, it started to tremble and wake. Oh, look, they cried. What a lovely little thing it is. The mouse tottered to its tiny feet. It sniffed the air. It peeped into the sky with its little bright eyes. It squeaked and squeaked again and squeaked again and scampered right away. The children clapped their hands. It seemed quite at home, they said. Ben giggled. At last, he exclaimed, there is a world with a mouse in it, thanks to me. The children lay on the grass and thought of the mouse running through the fields and forests and the empty spaces and through their minds, and they were very pleased. And the gods? Ah, oh, they hardly seemed to stir at all. Still being a bit lazy then. After a time, Sue said, now I will have a turn. She looked into the sky. She looked into herself. You can see she's starting to think on those pictures. I think, she said, that what this world needs next is a bird. The gods rolled over in their sleep and gentle thunder sounded. A bird? asked the others. What kind of thing is a bird, Sue? A bird, said Sue. Well, it's a kind of birdy thing, of course. It's a thing that sings and flaps its wings and it flies. Yes, that's it. It flies through the empty air. The others giggled. You're just making that up, said Harry. Of course I am, said Sue. And surely, said little Ben, there couldn't possibly be a creature like that, could there? Yes, there could, said Sue. Just watch. So she collected some sticks and she gathered some leaves and she picked some grass and she made a bird with them. She cradled it in her hands and held it up to the sky. This will never work, said Harry. Sing, bird, sing, said Sue. Come along, sing, bird, sing. And as the children watched, the bird opened its eyes and the small sharp beak, and it sang the sweetest of songs. Oh, they gasped. That is so beautiful, Sue. That is nothing, she said. Just watch. She held the little, um, she held the singing bird close to her face. Now, little bird, she whispered, fly, go on, flap your wings, fly away. Nothing happened. So she said it again. And the bird trembled in her fingers. And she said it again. Fly, little bird, fly. And the bird kept on trembling and singing. And Sue said it all again, and said it all again. And the children chewed their lips in excitement. And at last the bird opened its wings and leapt from Sue's hands into the empty air. And it flew once, twice, three times around their heads and then right away and out of sight. The children giggled and giggled and gasped. They were speechless. Oh, Sue, Harry and little Ben said at last. The thing called a bird is simply wonderful. What a marvellous thing to have in the world. They clapped their hands and stamped their feet and the ground shook with their excitement. High above, one of the gods opened one eye. He rolled over and looked down from his cloud. He smiled at the children having such fun. He saw the bird flitting across the world. What a pretty thing, he thought. How on earth did that get there? He glanced at the other gods. Maybe they'd been working while he'd been fast asleep, but it didn't look like it. He shrugged. Anyway, he thought, it's very clever. Then he yawned and closed his eye again and went back to his dreams. OK, that's where we're going to leave it for this morning. Um, so you can see the, the book is getting quite exciting. Um, and what I want us to think about this morning is we're going to be thinking about understanding both sides of an argument. 
okay? And what I want you to think about for the next few minutes um, is maybe whether or not you think the children were doing the right thing, whether they were doing good, okay? Or if you don't think they were, why? What do you think, you know, why do you think they shouldn't be making these creatures? What could possibly um, go wrong? Why, why, would they, why would they not be allowed to do it? Okay, so what I want you to think about, or maybe just have a little think about some ideas, reasons for and reasons against. And what I've put up there, just to give you an example, against there, I said it wasn't their job to create new animals. It wasn't up to them. It wasn't there, it wasn't, should have been up to them. Okay, so that's an idea there. And one of the reasons maybe we shouldn't, the children shouldn't have been making new creatures. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to press pause now. I'm going to give you 10 minutes to think about this. Have a little think. What ideas can you come up with? And what we'll do when we come back together, I'll give you some ideas about for and against. And maybe you can think if you've got some extra ones, you can add them to my list. OK, so press pause now and press play again in 10 minutes time. Off you go. OK, welcome back. Hopefully you've been able to talk about this this morning. Um, I haven't, you don't need you to formally write it yet. That's going to be the main task for this morning. And what I want you to be thinking about then, arguments for and arguments against. Now, what we're going to do in a moment, OK, you've had a little chance to think about it for five or ten minutes. And what I want you to do in a minute is to think of how you could possibly write those down. As many um, ideas for and against as you possibly can. OK, now. What I want you to do. Is divide your page into for and against, just like we did just now. And I want you then to spend a bit of time formalizing your ideas. So I want you to physically write as many ideas for and as many ideas against as you possibly can. Now, what we're going to do then, um, as part of the, the plenary this morning, we're gonna come back together and I'm gonna show you my arguments for and against. You can magpie some of those ideas and add them to your list if you wish to, because they're going to be really useful for you in tomorrow's lesson. OK, so try and come up with as many ideas for and against as you can and write them down. Please think about presentation. Draw the line with a ruler. Um, make sure, please, that you're joining your letters. You could use bullet points if you wanted to. That would be a really sensible idea. OK, so that's what I want you to do. When you think you're finished and you've got as many reasons for and against as you can written down, then um, can you press play and come back to listen to me? OK, so press pause now. OK, welcome back. I hope you've got a few ideas written down. As I said just now, you can be magpieing some of mine if you're struggling for ideas. OK, and reasons for, I thought, you know, reasons for creating new creatures um, where there, there were holes and gaps in the world. The children could see those gaps. Um, another reason, the gods just simply hadn't done their job. They'd done part of it and then got a bit lazy. Another reason, there was plenty of room for more species in the world. If there had been no rodents like mice that had been invented, if there had been no birds that had been invented, there's plenty of room. For the birds particularly, there's a whole empty sky. Um, and finally, for four, there was a chance for the children to use their imagination to create animals. Imagination is a really powerful tool. Why not give the children a chance to have a go at creating some creatures themselves? Um, they might be able to come up with some brilliant ideas that the gods hadn't even thought of. So they were the four things that I came up with um, on the four side of the argument. But what about against? Because there are two sides to every argument, two sides to every story, as I'm sure some of you have heard me talk about in the classroom. If we fall out on the playground, there is always two sides to a story. Um, and against here, um, I said that really it wasn't the children's job to create new animals. It wasn't their job. It was up to the gods. OK, maybe the children could help with ideas, but really it was the gods job to create. And that 
The second part there, the second idea, that the earth wasn't their world to tamper with. Okay, the gods had created it, it belonged to the gods, it wasn't up to the children to tamper with it. And finally, the main reason is the gods just hadn't finished making the world yet. They might upset their plans. Okay, they might have come up with an idea, or they might have thought to themselves, actually, we don't want to have mice in this in this world for a reason. There might have been a reason for that. Okay, so there are, you know, as you can see, there are plenty of arguments for, plenty of arguments against. Um, I'm going to say now, press pause. Um, if you need to add any of my ideas, then feel free to do so to your lists. Um, if you've got extra ones that you've come up with, brilliant. You can always use those as well. OK, um, I'm not claiming to be the best at everything. I'm sure there are some ideas that I will have missed. OK, um, so press pause now if you need to borrow any of my ideas to just bulk up your list a little bit. Press pause now and press play when you're ready to come back for the plenary. OK, welcome back. Hopefully you've now got a super duper list where you've added my ideas to your ideas. Um, and what I want you to do for the plenary, I don't need to do any more writing, but I want you to sit and consider the argument points. And I want you to think about which decision, which side of the argument you agree with. OK, um, so you're either going to be writing tomorrow for the for side of the argument or I'm going to be writing for the against. And what I want you to do just for the last couple of minutes of the lesson is decide which one you think you agree with most and why. Why do you think that? Remember, I always use the word why in my lessons. Why, why, why? OK, make a decision and justify it. OK, and then I want you to keep that decision locked away in your brain overnight, ready for tomorrow's writing lesson. You might also have a little think about it overnight you might suddenly sit bolt upright in bed in the middle of the night and think i've changed my mind i was going to argue for but now i'm going to argue against of course you can change your mind tomorrow okay but try and think you know weigh up the ideas which one do you think you're most likely to argue for okay press pause now um while you're doing that and then i will see you in tomorrow's lesson take care bye bye